The Crossbow Cannibal is a nickname that was given to Stephen Sean Griffiths, a British serial killer who was convicted of murdering three women in Bradford, England. Griffiths earned the nickname due to the fact that he killed his victims using a crossbow. He was arrested in 2010 after a caretaker at his apartment building found a gun in his room, and Griffiths was subsequently convicted of the murders of Susan Rushworth, Shelley Armitage, and Suzanne Blamires. Griffiths was known to have a history of mental health problems and drug use, and he had previously been institutionalized. He was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 30 years. Welcome back friends, today we'll be taking a look at a man who ate the women he slept with. And we mean that literally. He actually ate them. So if you enjoy our informative type of content, please subscribe, as of this video we're one-fifth the way to a thousand subscribers. Subscribe and join the community of mystery seekers. Without further delay, let's dive into another forgotten mystery. Stephen Sean Griffiths was born on December 24, 1969, in Dewsbury, West Yorkshire, England. He grew up in the town of Holmforth, and later moved to Huddersfield. Griffiths had a troubled childhood, and reportedly suffered abuse at the hands of his mother. As a teenager, Griffiths began experimenting with drugs, and he was known to use heroin and crack cocaine. He dropped out of school at the age of 16 and began working odd jobs. In his early 20s, Griffiths began to experience mental health problems, and he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. He was admitted to a psychiatric hospital several times, and was prescribed medication to manage his symptoms. Despite his mental health issues, Griffiths was able to hold down a job as a forklift truck driver for a time, and he also worked as a nightclub bouncer. However, he eventually became unemployed and began to live off of welfare benefits. Griffith's behavior became increasingly erratic in the years leading up to his arrest, and he was known to be aggressive and confrontational towards others. He also developed an interest in violent pornography, and reportedly spent hours watching it online. Griffiths was described by those who knew him as a quiet and unassuming man who kept to himself. He was also known to have a fascination with violence and serial killers, and he had a collection of books and videos on the subject. Griffiths was of average height and build, with short dark hair and a beard. He was often seen wearing dark clothing and had several tattoos on his arms and legs. He was known to have a history of mental health problems, including paranoid schizophrenia, and had been in and out of psychiatric hospitals. There is limited information available on Stephen Sean Griffith's family life, but it is known that he had a difficult relationship with his mother. Griffiths has been quoted as saying that he was physically and emotionally abused by his mother when he was growing up. Griffith's father left the family when he was young, and he reportedly had little contact with him after that. It is unclear whether Griffiths had any siblings. There have been reports that Griffith's mother suffered from mental health issues, including schizophrenia, but this has not been confirmed. It is possible that Griffith's own struggles with mental illness were influenced by his family history. Overall, it appears that Griffith's family life was tumultuous and contributed to his troubled upbringing. Stephen Sean Griffith's school life was marked by poor academic performance and behavioral issues. He attended Holmforth High School in West Yorkshire, England, but dropped out at the age of 16 without completing his studies. Griffiths was known to be disruptive in class and had a reputation for being a troublemaker. He was frequently absent from school and struggled to focus on his studies. It is unclear whether Griffiths had any learning disabilities or underlying issues that contributed to his difficulties in school. After leaving school, Griffiths worked a series of low-paying jobs and did not pursue any further education or training. His lack of education and job prospects may have contributed to his feelings of frustration and anger, which may have fueled his later criminal behavior. Stephen Sean Griffith's first known crime was committed in 2009, when he assaulted a man with a hammer in a parking lot in Huddersfield, West Yorkshire. The victim, a 47-year-old man, sustained serious injuries to his head and neck and had to be hospitalized. Griffiths was arrested and charged with attempted murder, but the charges were later reduced to grievous bodily harm with intent. He was found guilty and sentenced to three years in prison. While in prison, Griffiths reportedly made comments to other inmates about his desire to become a serial killer. He also told one inmate that he had a kill list of people he wanted to target once he was released. After serving his sentence, Griffiths was released from prison in April 2009. Stephen Sean Griffith's second known crime was the murder of Susan Rushworth, 
a 43-year-old sex worker, in June 2009. Rushworth had been working in the red light district of Bradford, West Yorkshire, when she was picked up by Griffiths. Griffiths took Rushworth to his apartment and killed her, reportedly using a crossbow to shoot her in the head. He then dismembered her body and disposed of her remains in the river air. Rushworth's disappearance was not initially reported, as she was known to lead a transient lifestyle and had previously gone missing for extended periods of time. It was only after the disappearances of two more women that police began to investigate her case. Griffiths was eventually arrested in May 2010, after a caretaker at his apartment building discovered a gun in his room. During questioning, Griffiths admitted to killing Rushworth, as well as two other women, Shelley Armitage and Suzanne Blamires. Stephen Sean Griffiths killed Shelley Armitage, a 31-year-old sex worker, in April 2010. Armitage had been working in the same red-light district of Bradford as Susan Rushworth, the first woman Griffiths killed. On April 26, 2010, Griffiths invited Armitage back to his apartment, where he shot her in the head with a crossbow. He then dismembered her body and disposed of the remains in the river air, just like he had done with Rushworth. Armitage's disappearance was initially treated as a missing persons case, and it was not until Griffiths was arrested for the murder of Suzanne Blamires that her case was linked to the other killings. Armitage was described by her family as a loving mother of two who had struggled with drug addiction and had turned to sex work to support herself. Suzanne Blamires was another one of three women murdered by Stephen Sean Griffiths, also known as the Crossbow Cannibal, in 2010. She was a 36-year-old sex worker who lived in Bradford, West Yorkshire, England. On May 21, 2010, Griffiths lured Blamires to his apartment, where he killed her by shooting her in the head with a crossbow. He then dismembered her body and disposed of the remains in the river air, just like he had done yet again, with his other victims. Blamires' disappearance was reported to the police, and they launched an investigation. During their search for Blamires, they discovered CCTV footage that showed Griffiths carrying bags of what appeared to be body parts. Griffiths was arrested and charged with the murder of Blamires, as well as the murders of Susan Rushworth and Shelley Armitage. He later confessed to all three killings and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Blamires was described by her family as a loving mother of three who also struggled with drug addiction and had turned to sex work to support herself. Her death, along with those of Rushworth and Armitage, sparked outrage and led to calls for greater protection for sex workers. The investigation into the murders committed by Stephen Sean Griffiths, the crossbow cannibal, was launched in May 2010 after the disappearance of Suzanne Blamires was reported to the police. During the investigation, police searched Griffiths' apartment and found evidence linking him to the murders, including bloodstains, DNA evidence, and a crossbow. They also discovered CCTV footage of Griffiths carrying bags of what appeared to be body parts. Griffiths initially denied any involvement in the murders, but later confessed to all three killings. He was charged with murder and in December 2010, he pleaded guilty to all charges. The investigation was carried out by West Yorkshire Police, who worked closely with forensic experts and other law enforcement agencies to gather evidence and build a case against Griffiths. The investigation was complex and involved extensive forensic analysis, as well as interviews with witnesses and family members of the victims. The case received widespread media attention and sparked a public outcry, particularly over the treatment of sex workers and the need for better protection for vulnerable women. The investigation and subsequent trial of Griffiths were seen as a significant victory for the police and the justice system, who were able to bring a dangerous and violent offender to justice. The families of the victims, Susan Rushworth, Shelley Armitage, and Suzanne Blamires, were left devastated by their loss and the horrific manner in which their loved ones were murdered. The murders committed by Stephen Sean Griffiths, the crossbow cannibal, were particularly brutal and shocking, and the families were left to grapple with the trauma and pain caused by their deaths. Although Griffiths was eventually arrested, charged, and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, the families of the victims were left with the knowledge that their loved ones had been brutally murdered and would never return. They were also forced to confront the stigma and prejudices surrounding sex work, which had played a role in the deaths of their loved ones. In the aftermath of the murders, the families of the victims called for greater protection and support for sex workers, as well as for increased awareness and understanding of the issues they faced. They also expressed their hope that the tragedy of their loved ones' deaths 
would serve as a wake-up call for society to address the root causes of violence against women and vulnerable groups. While the sentencing of Griffiths provided some measure of closure for the families, the trauma and pain caused by the murders will likely stay with them for the rest of their lives. Although his crimes have faded from public memory, the impact of his actions on the families of his victims and the wider community cannot be forgotten. The investigation and subsequent trial of Griffiths highlighted the importance of law enforcement agencies working together to bring dangerous criminals to justice. As we continue to explore forgotten mysteries, it is important to remember the victims and their families, and to work towards creating a safer, more just society for all. If you enjoyed our content please leave a like and subscribe. We're trying to hit a thousand subscribers by June and your help would be really appreciated. Leave your thoughts in the comments and we'll see you in the next video.